Good morning, everybody. I didn't premeditate my eulogy today because we've had such a very irregular, strange journey here with um, this pandemic and how it's created this very different experience for us with losing loved ones. Um, we've had almost two months to really grieve and try to understand the loss of my dad. We had a celebration of life where each of our family members, my mom, my grandma, my sisters, were all able to share our messages with you. So today, I, I really just wanna take this time to speak for my family um, and thank everybody for being here and really just look at everybody who showed up to share their love and appreciate and acknowledge how lucky my dad was in his life, how fulfilled he was with what he really valued, which is family, his faith, and just you know the very little things that he enjoyed. My dad was a very simple man and he enjoyed eating. He, he enjoyed my mom who just never ending, you know, chef in the kitchen and his grandchildren um, watching his movies, so all these little things. And sometimes when you don't know exactly why things happen, you look for, you try to look for messages around you and signals, and I think that's what me and my family and my mom have been doing is, is trying to understand and make sense of everything um, and, and try to feel my dad's presence somehow around us. So there's a, a verse in, in Proverb, Proverbs that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I've been reading that several times and, and really reflecting on that and trying to figure out what I can do if I can't understand what happened. How, how else do I cope with this? How else do I move forward and be able to be okay that my dad's not here? And I think, you know, what, what this verse really um, brings to my heart and my mind is that there's really no way to understand this. You just have to hold on to what um, you have of, of that person, of the memories, of the love that will stay with us forever. And my dad has surrounded us with so much of his presence from his voice that we hear everywhere, all his videos singing. I really feel like his presence is still here. My mom has constantly come across all these signs as well as me and my sisters with little things like they saw a license plate that said, thy will. And my mom and I and my sisters went on a trip to Lake Arrowhead. And the smallest things you, you come across and you're like, that's strange. I, I feel like those strange things are the messages that we get. They're not clear, they're not direct. They're very puzzling, but it's almost a small um, communication from my dad, from God to let us know their presence is here with us. The, the person whose cabin I rented, her name was Maria Krebel. At first, I thought they spelled my name wrong because it was spelled exactly the same, K-R-I-B-E-L instead of S-E-L. Um, come to find out that was the name of the owner of the cabin. So I was like, that is so strange. I never come across, I never heard that last name before. Um, it, it's almost like we were meant to go there to find some peace, to find some solitude. And in that place, my mom, had such a huge feeling of presence of my dad with her walk in the cloud story that you guys might have all heard with the somewhere in time music playing when my sister and mom went into a store um you know just so many little things where we knew that we were supposed to be there and my dad was really there with us we we all could feel him there um i bought a car this weekend and I, I was trying to think about my eulogy and what in the world am I going to say after all the things I already said in the celebration of life and more you know signs came across that my dad is here with me and that's really all that I want to feel and I think that everybody is looking for is the presence of my dad 
that he's still lingering here and, and, and letting us know how much he loves us and to help us grieve for him. Um, so the, the car salesman, he, he was also going to a funeral today, this very day for his brother-in-law who passed away from COVID on February 1st, two days after my dad. He was 50 years old and he's also getting buried in Forest Lawn, West Covina. So oh I, I was so shocked. I was like, that that's incredible. incredible. It's like, you know, there's connections yes. around us and in this world. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it means. But in time, maybe it'll reveal itself. Maybe that meant something. I just, I don't know what to do with it at this point. But I found that too weird of a coincidence. And as I'm trying to cope and figure out, you know, how I'm going to react today, how am I going to feel, it made me realize there are so many other people who have gone through what we're going through. We're not alone. We're not experiencing this in a you know in a bubble where we're we're all here um, that we can support each other and be together even strangers that we don't know may have a word of comfort for us so we just have to let our hearts be open to that um, so as you all are here today we would love to continue to hear your stories and my mom has an impromptu thought wow. <laughs> so with that i'll end what i have to say and yeah. pass it on to my I, mom <laughs> i just said i just had a thought because he plays with numbers all this week he plays with number all this week and this will just surprise you alex was born again on april 1996 i did my calculation right now january 30 he turned 25 from being born again 1996 so he's right it's his 25th birthday january 30 2021 if you do your calculation it's 25 years so he was born again and it just amazes me <laughs> right pastor it's 25 his birthday <laughs> right Matt?